Do you remember a time when you had a close call, a brush with death? You look back at it and think that an angel was somehow looking out for you. And today you thank your lucky stars that you're still alive. What if I told you that you actually died that day? That right now you're living in an alternate reality where you take your life and the fact of your being alive for granted. But there's a parallel reality in which you died and your loved ones are still grieving about you. This is the profound implication of quantum physics based on something called the many worlds interpretation. And it's backed by some of the biggest names in theoretical physics. Could this really be true? And if it is, then what does it mean for your life and your loved ones? That's coming up right now. Quantum mechanics shows that all particles are not particles at all, but really waves of probabilities. There are two common interpretation of how these waves become the particles that we observe. The most conventional interpretation is called the Copenhagen interpretation. And it says that the probability wave collapses and the particles become distinct at the moment they are observed. It should be noted that these observations are measurements and do not necessarily require a conscious observer. A competing interpretation to this, which is gaining favor with many physicists, including some of the biggest names in physics, is called the many worlds interpretation. It postulates that no collapse actually occurs, that everything in the entire universe is a wave function and remains a wave function. This interpretation rejects the idea of wave function collapse altogether. According to this, probability waves never collapse. But what we observe as a distinct particle only occurs for us in this reality, but does not collapse in another reality. So reality is continually branching off into parallel worlds whenever a measurement or observation occurs. So this is why it's called the many worlds interpretation, because as wave function collapse occurs due to observations, a parallel universe is created where that wave collapse never occurs. This theory introduces the seemingly absurd complication of creating a near infinite number of parallel worlds. So why is it so widely embraced by physicists? Well, proponents argue that this interpretation actually simplifies and explains the seeming randomness of quantum physics, since all possibilities are potentially real in various branches of parallel universes, there's no chance all possibilities occur in numerous parallel universes. They say quantum mechanics only seems random to us because we experience reality in only one of the branches. All possible alternate histories and futures are equally real and can exist in parallel, according to this theory. So every time you had a brush with death, you died in a parallel reality. But the one reality where you remain conscious is the only reality you're aware of, this reality. In the other reality, they buried you and your loved ones came to your funeral. But as far as you know, you've always been alive. Some have extrapolated this concept to mean that whenever you might die, there will be another universe in which you're still alive, because some quantum event, even if astronomically unlikely, will save you from this death. This is the concept behind quantum immortality. If this theory is true, as many prominent physicists believe, then it may have some mind-blowing implications for your death and the death of your loved ones. It would mean that there is a version of reality where your dog or cat or your mother or father, a grandparent, or any of your loved ones who may have died in this reality here are alive and well. Could quantum mechanics in some way be actually verifying the idea of an immortal consciousness or even an immortal soul, which many people believe in? It's important to distinguish between an immortal consciousness and immortal soul. If a soul is defined as disembodied consciousness, then that's not what would happen in the many worlds interpretation. Your consciousness is always attached to your body, and from the perspective of the conscious person, nothing happened. He or she never died. In fact, if you can recall being in a close call where you almost got killed, then almost certainly you did get killed in a parallel reality. But your consciousness survived in this reality where you did not get killed. Hugh Everett, who proposed the Many Worlds idea in 1957, reportedly believed in this kind of quantum immortality and thought he would continue to live forever. In our reality, of course, he died, suddenly of a heart attack in 1982. As a side note, tragically, 14 years after his death in 1996, his daughter, Liz, took her own life, explaining in her suicide note that in some branch of the universe, she hoped to reunite with her father. 
But let's also understand that there are some issues with this theory. For one thing, the many worlds theory is not embraced by all physicists. But even the Copenhagen interpretation is not a majority consensus among physicists. It should also be pointed out that quantum events must obey conservation laws. You can't cheat science in order to cheat death. So for example, if you fall out of a 40-story building, there could be zero chance scientifically that you would survive in any reality. It is also possible that it is scientifically impossible for you to live as a human being past, say, 150 years. And another issue pointed out by Max Tegmark is that this type of branching into multiverses only occurs when there's a binary option. In other words, when the options are that you die instantly or survive. If your consciousness slowly fades away, for example, a slow deterioration from old age or due to cancer, then this interpretation likely would not apply. And of course, all bets are off if the many worlds interpretation is proven incorrect. But if this theory is correct and true, then I, you, or anyone that has lost a loved one can take some comfort knowing that the person whom we've been grieving about for perhaps years or decades is in fact alive and well in a reality of the cosmos where you also are likely still alive to be with them. We just don't have access to that reality, at least no access that we're aware of. Arvinash here. If you like our videos, then consider subscribing and ring the bell so that you can be informed when we upload more fascinating videos. We make one to two videos a week. We'll see you in the next video.